It wasn't cream. It was some sort of cream alternative, created with some unholy mixture of buttermilk and vegetable oils. Almost certainly less healthy than the meat milk fats it's trying to replace. But whatever. I haven't made this dish for years. It will have to do. I can adapt. Fill a pot with salted water, the salinity of the Mediterranean, as my mother and every TV chef has drilled into my head. I'm making this dish because I'm supposed to use the salmon. Creamy salmon pasta, it's about as simple as you can go. It's pretty much just cream and carbs, but I mean, it's cream and carbs, what's not to love? I sliced a red onion and two cloves of garlic. I like them a bit chunky, but you're not supposed to. If I was cooking for someone who I thought would care, I would have made smaller cubes, but I like onions more like strips in this case. The water boiled and I put my portion of penne in. The anxiety begins as I try to guess the timings where everything would be finished at the same time. I always suck at that. In this case, the fear is that the salmon overcooks. You don't want that. Saute the onions and garlic in olive oil first, and once they soften up, pour in the double cream, or in this case, cream alternative, and cubed salmon. Cook until the salmon is done and the cream cooks down a bit. Add some pasta water to the sauce, drain the pasta, then stir the penne into the sauce so it's fully coated. Make sure to grab your keys and go answer the door because the doorbell just rang. It was a package for my mother. The mailman kept his distance. Fucking yes, this pasta is just as good as I remember it. The cream inside the tubes of penne is just perfect. I seasoned it perfectly. The pasta is perfectly al dente. God, I'm a fucking good cook. It's cream and carbs. You can't go wrong. Why are all the things that taste good also things that make you fat? How come people are just okay with subjecting themselves to worse food every day because what, aesthetics and health? They seem to just adapt to it, I guess. Also, really, this cream alternative is pretty much fine. It's still rich and nice. My ThinkPad was auto-playing my YouTube Watch Later playlist as I was chowing down. The Bon Appetit video ended and Alcohol on Sunday's Red Stripe began. I've been re-watching some classic era after dark videos because my friend Princess Plunderphonic suggested it. I realised I'd never seen the Alcohol on Sundays videos because I don't care about other people's opinions on the taste of beer. Turns out Digi doesn't care either, which means this is surprisingly watchable. Or listenable rather, because I mostly focused on this perfectly, and let me stress, PERFECTLY seasoned pasta sauce, god I am so fucking cool. I tried to slow myself down because when I eat too quickly I get tachycardia, especially from a carb heavy meal like pasta. My fork scrapes bare plate and I polished it off, a bit bigger portion size than I had intended but it wasn't really a big deal. Now my mind collects itself from the orgasm of salt and fat and the contents of this YouTube video begin to become comprehensible. You know what? I would like some booze. I'm a bitch for parasocial pressuring. When I see a character in a movie smoking a cigarette, I want a cigarette. When I see someone drinking, I want to drink. It's like my memory is jogged and I notice, oh yeah, that would be an activity. That's something I could do. Nice. I only have vodka in the house. Vodka is great, but it only fits one purpose. If you're drinking vodka in any way, you're going to get drunk. When I make mixed drinks, I want to taste the alcohol. I like the bite at the back of my throat. So I'm going to get drunk. I don't want to get drunk. I want to sip. I want to chill. Beer is the only option. But I only have vodka. The decision is made for me, essentially. I have to go to the shop and get some beer. I know it'll be fun to drink and watch along with alcohol on Sundays. That seems like the optimal way to consume that series. Also, I just finished my meal. If I go outside, I can have a post-meal cigarette instead of vaping. You guys know me as the vape guy, but I only vape indoors. If I smoke, the smell consumes the entire house, tendrils of tobacco reaching into every orifice. I don't want that, and my mother doesn't either, so I have it. So I have vape indoors, but outside I smoke. This is in fact the ultimate way to smoke, it turns a cigarette into a special occasion. One day I'll make an analysis video where I compare the details of smoking to the details of vaping. I put a cig from the pack behind my ear. My boots are on the floor in my room, so I put them on with no socks, then I grab my keys and lighter and make my way down and out. As I open the door, the sunlight is overwhelming, but once my eyes adjust, it's not so bad. The weather is warm and it's midday. Everything seems very saturated. I light my cigarette and take an inhale. The dopamine flows. The smoke feels great. There are more people on the streets than there were last time I went out, about a week and a half ago. I don't even remember the last time I went outside that wasn't this exact pilgrimage. Two minutes to the shop to buy booze, two minutes back. This is what I think most people would consider perfect weather. 
hot but not uncomfortable. I've never understood this. All hot weather is uncomfortable. There's no ambulances this time. Last time there were three. I'm convinced they're just running them non-stop to keep people scared. I reach the shop and beeline to the beer. Now, I wonder if any of you have noticed. Something has happened here. Did you catch it? I didn't. Well, did you? Let me rewind. I grabbed my keys and lighter and make my way down and out. I grabbed my keys and lighter. Not my wallet, though. Fuck. Are you kidding me? I storm out of the shop, muttering about forgetting my wallet out loud. I'm walking back to my house. How did this happen? This is annoying. I think most of the time when things like this happen, people just think, well, these things just happen. People just put up with inconveniences. Only people like us who have spent time away from this place know that it doesn't have to be. In my native environment, there is no forgetting stuff. If you forget information, it only takes as long as typing your query into a search bar to remember it. And forgetting an object? A file manager is only a couple clicks away, or a terminal is one keybind away. Everything is within arm's reach at all times, and infinitely copyable. Only once you've been away from this do you realize that you shouldn't have to live with these minor inconveniences. I unlock the front door and walk up the stairs. Why is this okay to most people? Am I the only people who would think this is a problem? Am I the only person who would think this is a problem? Space is a problem? Why can't I just teleport my wallet to where I am? I unlock the door to my apartment, walk into my room, grab my wallet from my desk, and he'll turn back out. Is this a me thing? Why does this stuff always happen to me? I think people just accept all sorts of stupid things because it's not killing them. I remember the years before I discovered Adblock. I was completely okay with just putting up with ads on the internet. I just considered it something you had to put up with. But now, there's no way I could go back to being inundated with products constantly. I think this really gets to the heart of the human problem. Humans are too adaptable. People easily adapt to a shitty 9 to 5, and they're so adapted they don't even notice their life has been worthless until it's too late. This is the origin, proto-Abrahamic concept of delayed gratification. The person who first thought, this agriculture thing is hard work and rubbish, but if I just cope with it, by the time winter comes the whole tribe will be indebted to me. I just need to put up with it. And thus, human vertical power social structures became. But have you ever tried this with an autistic person? Someone who eats the same meal every day because they can't adapt to a new one? Autism is inherently radical, because we will not adapt to your shitty system. We don't have that automatic response. I'm back in the shop and standing in front of the beer selection. I forgot to think about this. It takes too long to choose a beer. Perhaps some Strongbow? I know I want a four pack at least, preferably cans not bowls, they're bigger. Strongbow, or as I have taken to call it, weak bow, is a pop cider. It exists to be as palatable as possible while pretending to be alcoholic. You assume, since cider is normally stronger than beer, and since it has the word strong in the name, that it will be cheap and strong. But in fact, it's only 4%, which is essentially sweetened water. It's incredibly easy to drink, but not worth it if you ever want to see any effects. But then again, I'm not looking to get smashed or I would have just gone with the Russian standard back in my room. The first video from Alcohol on Sundays reverberates, and I end up going with Red Stripe. I don't normally get Red Stripe, it's not as strong as I usually go with, but the heat is less pleasant by the minute. I purchase the 4 pack with the card from my wallet and leave. I catch a view of myself in a mirror by the exit. Baggy track pants, ripped and dirty hoodie, missing front tooth, I haven't showered in a week, my hair is greasy, I'm disgusting. Most aren't committed enough to be ugly. You may front as an eldritch or alienating, but are you actually confident enough to be literally repulsive? Are you real enough to smell punk? On the way back, I pass another autist on the other side of the street. He's fat, balding, but looks only early 30s. Dirty grey t-shirt with baggy trousers. From his gait, I can tell he doesn't belong in this world. Like a character designed in a completely different art style than the background. We exchange telepathically. No language, of course, therefore nothing I could really relate to you effectively. Sensations, images, emotions, and things that don't really fit into any of those boxes. It only takes a split second. The perfect weather is starting to feel hotter by the second. 
I don't exercise, this is too much. All of the sounds are too loud. The people are too there. They exist too much. I don't want them to. Take your fucking baby stroller and run it into the street, you fucking sunglasses wearing typical. The cars all sound too different from each other. How am I supposed to background them if they're so apparent? The first beads of sweat from the uncharacteristic exercise and heat is making my shirt touch my skin in a way I don't like. I don't want to be here. How do people put up with this shit? My beers are looking more appealing by the second. I get in. I sit down, I take my shoes off, I crack open a beer, I open a text document, I type, then I sit back and sip a beer for a while, finishing off this series. Alcohol on Sundays. I have to check my phone, I don't even know what day it is, Friday apparently, god knows what that means. The only alcohol review show that I know of, this is recorded in such a way that you can watch me get progressively drunker each week as I've been... yeah.